Hey everybody, it's Marcus. I made a plotter uh, out of LEGO Mindstorms and today I'm going to show you a video of it working and me setting up paths for it to do. First of all I'm going to go over how it's controlled. There is a Raspberry Pi sitting on the desk over there and that actually runs the control software. So I've got NXT Python running on there. It runs Raspberry N, which Raspberry Pi guys will obviously recognize. Um, this is the actual plotter itself right here. It's just standard uh, Lego Mindstorm stuff. Uh, I added a few cardboard pieces, nothing major. It's just, uh, you know, you, you can't just draw with Legos. There, there are no Lego pens. So I've added a pen and I've added what the 3D printer guys will uh, think of as a build platform, except that it just holds a piece of paper. It's a, a glass sheet on some cardboard, it's nothing major. Um, it holds a paper on with an alligator clip and some magnets. And over here I've got a netbook which I'll be using to control a Raspberry Pi since it's not hooked up to the TV or a keyboard. So first of all, we're going to go over here, if I can find the computer screen, I'm sort of running the camera backwards. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just draw the path in GIMP. Now, GIMP's export format for SVGs, it exports paths as part of an SVG image, but the problem is that it's got some non-standardization. <laughs> I don't know, it might be standard, but it really doesn't work if you just want to parse it the way you'd think it would work. So, you have to post-process the path a little bit if you want to have um, a stop and then a start again, lift the pen off the paper, move somewhere else, put it back down. So we're not going to do that today because that requires actually editing the, P the SVG file that comes out again. You can script that, but I lost the script or something. So we're going to start with drawing a well-known symbol using GIMP's path feature. Uh, that is a path feature. Okay. So it's really quite simple. You just click around here. Um, nothing major. We're just going to end up going in a loop here. And that should about do it. Very simple path. It shouldn't take too long. Now, this is just a GIMP image that's 150 by 200 pixels. Now, these are scaled to millimeters in uh, in the uh, actual plotter. So this should end up being about um, 14 centimeters wide. Now, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm American, but imperial units kind of suck, so I use metric. Okay, so then we go over to the paths dialog over here. I guess you can't really see this in the video, but uh, I'll try. It's uh, over here. You just have to right click on the path and click export path, and then we export to a magic file name test.path and this happens to be a symlink to a file in an sshfs directory that just so happens to copy to the raspberry pi so we don't even need to copy that over i just saved it to that place and thanks to the magic of unix scripting and sshfs and fuse nothing more needs to be done so uh, i'm going to pan over to the netbook now and I've actually already got an SSH connection open to the Raspberry Pi, so I just need to uh, change to the right directory. Uh, hang on, it's lagging. Uh, change to the directory and then run the, uh, the actual script. So it'll calculate the points and then display them so you can verify them. It's got some debug output of the SVG up here and then these are the actual points it's going to be uh, going over and those are sort of like g-code I guess I don't know I didn't use a g-code binary format at all I just I just use Python lists so um, it pauses for confirmation there we're going to pan over to the plotter and uh, get that set up to work hang on as I said I'm controlling this backwards so we put the platter or whatever you like to call it down right here and make sure that's hang on oh yeah yeah so that should be about good now I hope it doesn't break or move or it's kind of a finicky thing I mean <laughs> it's made out of Legos so 
try to put that right about in the middle. And then uh, we make sure motor control is running. We can restart that just to make sure it's in a clean state. Now that that's ready, uh, we should be able to just hit enter on the uh, on the netbook and have it work. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, have to take the cap off the pen. Yeah, that would end badly. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing it does is it homes all the axes automatically. So you don't even need to worry about that. You just put it on there and whatever state it's in, it'll fix itself before it starts. And as you can see, it's uh, quite automated. It really doesn't require any human interaction once it gets going. And so this is a very simple pattern, but obviously it can uh, make much more complicated ones. And that's done already. So if we wanted to, we could make this a lot more complicated. Uh, the only thing it can't do right now are curves. So basically, everything's going to be either horizontal or vertical. It only, one, it only moves one motor at a time because if you want to do more than one motor at a time, things get complicated and uh, <laughs> I'd have to add a whole bunch more lines of code and I don't really like writing a bunch of extra code. So uh, that's been Marcus and his plotter. I'm going to take it apart now because I've got a bit of replacement hardware. I've got actually a 3D printer in the works right now. So that's going to go where the printer is sitting and it's going to be controlled by that iMac sitting underneath the netbook. So that's going to be a lot more fun than this. And, uh, and now the Raspberry Pi is going to go be a, a KVM virtual console emulator thing. Well, if you have any questions, uh, email me, marcus at warners.net, or uh, uh, message my YouTube account. That emails me as well. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.